Welcome to the world of material science. My name is Professor Bonnet. In this video, you will learn about the basic types of phase diagrams. In the video before the last one, we already talked about the extreme case of complete solubility in the solid state. We will now take a look at the other extreme of complete insolubility in the solid state. One of the few systems that behaves strictly in this way is a combination of antimony, Sb, and lead, Pb. In the thermal analysis, both components show the expected arrest point at their respective crystallization temperatures. However, an increasing lead or antimony content causes the liquidus temperature to decrease continuously when only the pure components lead or antimony crystallize from the melt. The point at which the sloping lines intersect is called the eutectic point. The eutectic alloy does not solidify within an interval, but at a fixed temperature, like a pure metal. In our example, this alloy is 13% antimony. Due to the fact that both components solidify at the same time and at a much lower temperature than it would be the case for the pure components, a fine and uniform microstructure is formed that usually exhibits a characteristic lamellar structure. The reason for this lies in the low kinetic energy of the atoms at this temperature, which only allows short distances and therefore only the formation of very small crystals, also called crystallites. For all hypoeutectic alloys and hypereutectic alloys, the thermal analysis shows a breakpoint and an arrest point. The breakpoint indicates the fall below the liquidus, whereas the arrest point, where the melt has reached the eutectic concentration, and solidifies as eutectic, indicates the fall below the solidus, which in this case is called eutectical. The micrographs clearly show the lamellar, black and white striped structure of the eutectic, where lead appears black and antimony appears white. Engineers are usually interested in the type and quantity of phases present at room temperature. The desired information is provided by the microstructure rectangle. The boundary lines contained in the figure are always straight lines. Since according to the lever rule, there is always a linear relationship between the quantity of the phase and the lever length. Thus, it can be determined from any concentration of this alloy with complete insolubility in the solid state how many primary solidified crystals of each component, lead or antimony, and how much eutectic consisting of lead and antimony are present. Analogous to our copper nickel example, we'll now take a closer look at an alloy with 60% antimony. Here, it's easy to identify the start of solidification at 500 degrees Celsius and the end of solidification at 247 degrees Celsius. If we are interested in the composition of the phases at 400 degrees Celsius, we can again draw our lever arm and find that the concentration of our melt has already dropped to 40% antimony, as the primary crystals formed consist of pure antimony. The lever arm ratio of 1 to 2 results in a composition of one-third antimony, primary crystals, and two-third melt. Alloys with crystal mixtures, as they occur in systems with complete solubility in the liquid state, but complete insolubility in the solid state, exhibit a higher strength than the weakest component. These alloys are less suitable for shaping by forming, as a microstructure consists of different crystals. The eutectic or nearly eutectic alloys, however, are very well suited for casting, as they are highly fluid and low melting. When being machined, they produce short, brittle ships 
due to their inhomogeneous microstructure, which is, which is considered an advantage. The mechanical properties are determined by the proportion of the individual phases in the microstructure, with the influence of the primary crystals being dominant. This figure shows the Brunel hardness as a function of the antimony content. It can be seen that there is an overproportional increase in hardness up to the eutectic, which means that the hardness of lead can be increased by the factor 3 by the addition of only 13% antimony. But there are also alloys with limited solubility in the solid state. That is, alloys in which a certain limited amount of B dissolves in A and or A dissolves in B. Accordingly, solid solutions are formed, but their formation is limited. As the solid solution in the two areas are not identical, the solid solution with a rich content of A is donated with the Greek letter alpha, and the solid solution with a rich content of B is denoted with beta. Accordingly, the eutectic no longer consists of finely segregated A and B crystals, but of alpha and beta solid solutions. The micrograph of the pure alpha solid solution doesn't differ from the one of the solid solution with complete solubility in the solid state. The cooling curve also shows the two typical breakpoints at the intersection with the liquidus and solidus. Above the solubility limit, the micrograph not only shows the primarily solidified alpha solid solutions, but also eutectic, consisting of alpha and beta solid solutions. The cooling curve from the thermal analysis shows a breakpoint where the temperature falls below the liquidus and an arrest point at the eutectical. The pure eutectic shows, as we have already seen for systems with complete insolubility in the solid state, exactly one arrest point. Here, hyperoitectic systems behave analogously to hypoitectic systems, so that primarily solidified beta solid solutions, as well as oitectic, can be found in the microstructure, with a breakpoint and an arrest point in the cooling curve. In the area of miscibility, there are only homogeneous beta solid solutions, and the cooling curve exhibits two breakpoints. Most alloys with limited solubility in the solid state, however, show an additional decrease in solubility at decreasing temperature. The component that precipitates out due to the decreasing solubility during cooling forms solid solutions that are precipitated out at the grain boundaries. These precipitations are called segregates or precipitates. If we look at a microstructure with 15% B in the figure shown, we'll find beta segregate that has precipitated at the grain boundaries next to the alpha solid solution. According to the lever rule, concentrations higher than 20% B will also exhibit beta segregate at the grain boundaries besides alpha solid solution and eutectic. Above the eutectic, the situation is reversed as the solubility of component A in component B decreases and accordingly alpha segregate precipitates out at the grain boundaries. The exchange processes that are necessary for the formation of segregates in the solid state occur very slowly. Therefore, segregates generally precipitate out at energetically favorable places, which, beside grain boundaries, can be accumulations of voids or dislocations or other lattice defects. Diffusion and therefore the formation of degrades can be prevented by very fast cooling. However, the supersaturated single-phase solid solutions that are formed by this are in a metastable state. Colored and with a bit of decoration, people from Cologne can easily remember this diagram as a carnival cap. I'm glad 
that you decided to hang on until the end of this rather dry video and would be happy if you join me again in the next chapter. Then we will talk about the Mona Lisa of material science, the iron carbon phase diagram.